Welcome to our channel, where we bring you the latest in medical research and breakthroughs. Today we're discussing idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, or IPF, and a promising treatment, perfinidone. If you or a loved one are affected by IPF, this video could be crucial for you. Let's dive in. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a progressive lung disease with a median survival of just two to five years. It's marked by the scarring of lung tissue, making it increasingly difficult to breathe. Currently, treatment options are limited. But one drug, pyrfenidone, has shown promise in managing this condition. Perfenidone is an oral medication that targets two key processes in IPF, fibroblast proliferation and collagen deposition. It modulates the activity of transforming growth factor beta, or TGFB, and tumor necrosis factor alpha, or TNFA, molecules involved in tissue scarring and inflammation. This dual action helps slow the progression of lung fibrosis. Let's look at the key studies on pyrfenidone. Initially, phase three studies, including SP3 and the capacity trials, hinted at its benefits. However, results were mixed, leading to a more definitive phase three study called ASCEND. This study aimed to provide clearer evidence of perfenidone's efficacy in treating IPF. The ASCEND trial enrolled 522 patients with IPF. Over 52 weeks, participants received either perfenidone or a placebo. The main goal was to see if perfenidone could slow the decline in forced vital capacity, or FVC, a measure of lung function. This trial was crucial in determining the drug's effectiveness. The results were encouraging. Perfenidone significantly reduced the rate of FVC decline compared to placebo. Patients on perfenidone experienced an average decline of 235 milliliters in FVC versus 428 milliliters for those on placebo. This marked a significant improvement in lung function preservation for those taking the drug. For secondary outcomes, perfenidone also improved progression-free survival. This was defined by either a 10% decline in FVC, a 50-meter decrease in the 6-minute walk test, or death from any cause. Specifically, the progression-free survival rate was better in the perfenidone group, with a hazard ratio of 0.57. Perfenidone was generally well tolerated, but came with some side effects. Patients reported gastrointestinal issues, skin reactions, and reversible liver enzyme abnormalities more frequently than those on placebo. Despite these side effects, the benefits of the drug often outweigh the risks for many patients. Given its efficacy, pyrfenidone received FDA approval in 2014 and is recommended for treating IPF, especially for patients with an FVC between 50% and 80%. Guidelines suggest discontinuing the drug if there's significant disease progression over 12 months, ensuring its use is tailored to patient response. To wrap up, the ASCEND trial solidified perfenidone's role in managing IPF by slowing lung function decline and improving progression-free survival. However, its impact on long-term survival remains unclear. If you found this information helpful, Please like and subscribe for more updates on medical research. And if you have questions or topics you'd like us to cover, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Stay informed and take care.